And here we go with our uh, little pop-up show that we do. It's very simple. We just uh, put it directly all the way onto uh, uh, Facebook, and uh, it it goes. Let me just see if we're we're on. I just always like to check that uh, just to make sure that life is good. Okay, uh, there it is. See? Okay, all righty. I'm looking good. And uh, let me see here. Uh, let me see. I can get rid of that. Okay. And I can start admitting these people who are waiting, just a handful of them, oddly enough. Edward Berger, Len LaFrisco, and uh, Mike Chisholm joining us. Wait a minute. Uh, let me see here. Um, yeah. Okay. That's all we got right now. Uh, Shecky won't be here today because he's got an MRI and Marjorie isn't here today because she's got a shot that's got to be put in her back. And uh, it's a lot of medical problems today that are preventing our full complement of people. But hello to the ones who are here. Hi, how, how are you? That's right. That's right. I love that. That's right. That's your catchphrase. That's yeah. right. <laughs> That's uh, Edward Berger, the voice that launched a thousand ships. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and Charlene's out here, and Len LaFrisco, Mike Chisholm. Um, hello, Mike. How are you doing up there in Canada? Fantastic. I'm sorry to hear that so many people around you are uh, having ailments and things going wait, on. Wait a minute. Your microphone that you're trying to talk into isn't on, and it's probably coming from your camera, the audio. So you probably how's that? Is that better? Oh, there you go. Wait a minute. Wrong, wrong channel. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounded like you were in another room. And no, this one, this one over here was on. It was uh, I had it on the wrong channel there. What's so. all that crap you got in back of you there? Uh well, let's see. We got uh, I, I probably shouldn't call it crap because it looks like some pictures of loved ones, but you know. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that far for all the pictures, but uh we got one of Letterman's Bridges uh from the set of the Late Show. We got uh this is the there's the picture of Letterman making fun of me that was in the New York Times that he signed for me after. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, we got Sarah Palin back here. She's always a cloud crowd pleaser. What? Why? Oh, that's the one that you took us, Sarah Palin. Yeah, that's she. Uh, she's wishing us luck there. To the letter. I don't know. Podcast. I don't know whether to like you for that or hold it against you. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. To the Letterman podcast. Good yeah. luck with this, which is exactly how she uh, phrased it as she was writing it. It was. Pretty funny. I had her between a rock and a hard place a little bit. Well, how'd you have her between a rock and a hard place, did you figure? Well, because we were having such a lovely conversation. And then I said to her, hey, I have a, po I have a podcast. I was wondering if you might endorse it and, you know, wish us some luck and, and I can put it up in the podcast studio. And she said, oh, sure. What's your podcast? And I said, well, I, I host the Letterman podcast. And the look on her face when that happened was if I could, I wish I had it on video. And she didn't know what to do. And she uh, she called me bold. Like, I can't believe you are so bold. I can't believe you're asking me to do this. And so, yeah. So no, she was she once sued Letterman, right? Well, I, no, I don't think she sued him. She or threatened to. They, they, they tried to get him fired. And there was uh, you know, eight or nine, Good luck eight or with nine that. very committed people outside of the Ed Sullivan Theater with signs and whatnot. Um so anyway, yeah, when I had the opportunity to meet wait, her, was it, wait, just, was that when he uh, he admitted to uh, having an affair uh, with one of his? Uh... No, um, what happened was uh, he was Dave was making fun. So the Palins were in uh, New York City for the week mm -hmm. and uh, David Letterman made a, a joke about how. Uh, Sarah Palin's daughter got knocked up by Alex Rodriguez during the seventh inning stretch. No, oh, I did. And it turns out it wasn't the it wasn't the of age daughter that went to the Yankee game. It was yeah, the younger the wrong one. one. I remember that now. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, Big mistake, actually. If you think <laughs> well, about it. lots of comedy came from that, though. Uh, Dave's apology is still one of my very favorite episodes of all time. With him just talking to the camera, expertly apologizing yet skewering at the same time. It was lovely. Yeah, uh, Paula, your camera isn't on. I'm working on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on it. <m <Ellie> in, in a sense. Yeah. So, so Mike Chisholm has a... 
There you are. Hi, everybody. Bravo. Uh, Mike Chisholm is, uh, has a Letterman podcast. And oh, wait a minute, I, I, Mandy O'Brien. Here we go. Uh, uh, it has a Letterman podcast, which I think it's wonderful. It's a good show from uh, uh, what I hear. I haven't heard it yet. <laughs> you know, but uh, <laughs> Shecky seems to like it. Yeah. You know, that's that's high praise right there. Yeah, I'll that's high it. praise right there. But yep. it's amazing that you're doing a podcast and you're a fan of a program that no longer exists. Yes, sir. You know, I mean, you're putting all this effort into something that never will be ever again. And like us Firefly fans. Huh? <laughs> Just like our fans of the TV oh, show Firefly. Firefly, right. Yeah. Let, let, I, maybe I should do a podcast on Firefly. Let's see if we get an audience on that. Probably. I, oh, I love that show. That was I love cool. Firefly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's like in another era already. It's just a long time ago. It's one of those shows which uh, never was understood by the network that was running it. Yep. You know, oh, that's and, for sure. And it really was a it was a good show. Um, obviously, Charlie liked it. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, but I'm I'm trying to think. Of, well, if you listen to our program with Jack Bishop, he's always talking about Perry Mason. So that's going back way too far. You know. <laughs> <laughs> for it to, to even like a bad show so you know um, anyway uh for charlie uh he's probably not going to be on tonight okay oh or maybe ever again he can't get his equipment working wow. that's what she said anyway. <laughs> You know, I mean, I got to tell you, there's a great frustration that I always feel in 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 this, and it has always been that I am at the um, behest of my technology. In other words, if the technology isn't working, I can't work. Okay, so I've always, yeah. so I've always made it a very important thing to know how everything I do works. So I have control over it rather than it having control over me. Hey, the microphones aren't working tonight. Well, okay, goodbye. I'll see you later. No, I'm going to stay there and figure out how we're going to get those microphones working. Because I, you know, and even though I don't, I'm not, I don't do technology and I'm not a rocket scientist like Charlie is. And, uh, you know, I'm not uh, any of that. I've always tried to know exactly how the technology worked. Well, that's what grandchildren are for, Alex. Yeah, but yeah. You no, know, you know, when you're doing when you're doing a broadcast, you don't have any grandchildren around you to help. This, you know? this is true. This and, is true. And, and I've got to know how everything in that studio works, so that sometimes if I go in and there's something wrong, I can say I think that's what's wrong, and solve it so that I can get back to doing what I do which is my show, which has nothing to do with the technology. The technology simply facilitates it. And I've tried to tell um, uh, this guy, Jack, that, you know, he works in radio, but he's, he should have been ca cared about how every inch of that process worked because it's the only way you're going to control it, you know. Why does, why, does every clock, why does every clock in your house blinking 12, though? <laughs> <laughs> I will let you know right now that none of my clocks blink 12, okay? You you are so far ahead of your, what's the right, I mean, you, most people, by the time they get to 50 or 60, have no way of dealing with technology. You in your 80s are doing what, what a 20-year-old would do. I'm very impressed. Well, I'll tell you something, I, I, I got to tell you, uh, underneath this desk, you don't see it is a nest of cables, electric cables, plugged yeah. into about, I think I counted them, seven, um, what do you call it? power power strips. That's because I have that many things I got to plug in. Yeah. So today I decided I'm going to buy a, for $30, a power strip that holds 22 plugs. Oh Jesus! And oh, has God. and has room has room for the big blocks of plugs. That's the worst part. When you get a power strip 
And you can only put two things on the power strip because two of them are these giant clunky blocks that they put on the other end of a plug. How many, how many wall outlets do you have in that little room? We had to have them installed. Ah. And uh, there are one, two, uh, then there's three, four, but I can't get to, uh, I, no, I can get to one of them. I can only get to, out of the four, I can only get to three. Wow. But anyway, I got these all plugged into one wall socket. I'm okay. surprised that thing has not blown. No, no. I mean, you know, I, I, I the things that are plugged into there are not the that have to pull a lot of a lot of electricity. I mean, computers don't pull a lot of electricity. No. This control board I use for the audio doesn't pull much electricity. Um, but if I turn on the microwave and the and try and make toast at the same time, forget it will blow the fuse. <laughs> <laughs> the microwave always makes the fuse blow. When I was living in, in San Francisco, I, I had this fuse box downstairs and they had a whole bunch of, you know, the screw and fuses. Yeah. Not the circuit breakers, the screw and fuses. And I had to keep a bunch of them around the house because if I made my, it did anything plus the microwave, <laughs> right? So the microwave is is the one that eats up the most electricity. So this I have all these things plugged in and it's worked fine. So I'm but I just want to get all these. I want to get the the not the nest of wires. I'm never going to get rid of them. But I want to get the fact that I've got all these these power strips and they're not like evenly across, right? Because you can't do that. So there's one up like this, and one down like that, and there's one like this. <laughs> So I'm going to have to do that in about a week. And I'm afraid of that because I'm afraid I won't be able to get all the electricity plugged back in. Mm -hmm. so, and then uh, then, I, then it'll be a real problem. I won't do it till the weekend, however. So <laughs> it happens over the weekend. It happens over the weekend. And I got a bunch over here, too. Th this way. This way. <laughs> you can't see you can't see what I've got. I could show you. I could take the camera off and show it to you. But I, you know. I've got four six plug power strips. <laughs> six plug to... power strips. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I need, uh, and I probably still will have a couple of those power strips I'll still have to use, but at least I can put in, you know, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and it's, it, uh, 22 probably will take care of most of the plugs that are in down there. So I took a picture of your setup when I was there, and I can actually zoom in and see your plugs on the bottom. Oh, there they are. <laughs> see, see, yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's pretty messy. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's not, not quite that bad. <laughs> it's, 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 yours is not quite that bad. This is not that bad. It's just that, you know, it's one power strip piled up on top of another. And uh, when you're running a studio like that, you, if I took you into like Sirius XM and took you into a studio and then took you behind, just lifted up the back of the console underneath, you would see the same nest of wires that I've got under here. Yeah. You know, and nobody's ever said, let's come up with a way that we don't have to have all these plugs, you know, yeah. like a wireless electric uh, electricity. But that's not possible, is it, Charlie? If it, astro, no, it ask, them, ask, ask the astrophysicist here. Oh, it's possible. Tesla wanted to do it that way, but it was considered financially not viable. And that's why they didn't do it go that way. Oh, to have just a wireless feed to the yeah, car. The Tesla had all these towers that he wanted to have set up, beaming electricity into everybody's houses. And he wouldn't have to have all these electrical wires. And shit. You know, just when I'm hating Elon Musk. <laughs> He, he, you know what he has? He, he has this insane part of him, and then he has this totally rational, sane part of him. So, insane and sane are fighting for the life of Musk. When he goes over to Twitter, he acts like a complete asshole, right? <laughs> and, and, and completely unhinged, uh, al almost just a tad better than uh, um, uh, Kanye West, okay? All right? I mean, is that crazy? But then he holds a press conference, I think it was two days ago that I saw online, where he's showing the electric trucks that he's putting out there. Yeah. And yeah, you, know, you know how far these things go on a single charge? 500 miles. Yeah. 
Holy oh. Lord. Yeah. And everybody's applauding him because this is just a wonderful thing. And then they they showed how it it they it went up a grade. Or they showed it going up a grade and it didn't it, it passed all the other trucks. It was that had that much wow. that strong an engine. And I'm, I'm, and I look at it and I go, Well, he's my hero again, at least for today, <laughs> until he goes back to Market Street and that building I used to work in which then was called the furniture mart and is now called Twitter. Yeah. Uh, but I just, I don't, you know, I don't understand the man. I mean, there, there are moments that I just absolutely love him. And there are moments that I absolutely hate him. I mean, yeah, the, whole, feel- the whole electric car thing drives me crazy. Cause you people um, agree with me that, yeah, nothing's coming out of the tailpipe of that vehicle, but that power was generated somewhere with fossil fuels, most likely, either coal or natural gas. You know, some of it's solar, some of it's wind, whatever, but most of it's... So it's but you see, a, that that's your fault. That's your fault because you don't have uh, solar panels on your roof. Okay. If you did you that, know, if you did that, you wouldn't be using up any fossil fuels at all. We should, every house in the country should have that. I agree. Yeah, I don't understand why they don't have that. That should be part of the building. They should, just, well, the they should say, the you, you make a roof that you put on something, and then yeah. you just cover it with solar panels. Automatically. Or why, why don't we have shingles that are solar panels that plug together? I mean, come on. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah. Now here's here's Mandy who who moved into a new house. And you don't have any solar, do you? No. No. Now, have you thought about it? No. I I mean, it's a long story, but this city that I moved into, this little town, mm-hmm. they probably wouldn't let me have them. Honestly. Really. Well, remember the whole. I thought I told you the story about my she shed. How they right. turned it. She shed. Yeah. <laughs> So I could never even imagine trying to get solar panel. But my house is this little bitty house. There's no way. What's happening with the she shed? Well, it's now done and I got a permit for it, but it was just a lot of oh, bureaucracy. Yeah. <laughs> Put it that way. What were you going to say, Lynn? No, I said good that she got her permit. I'm very happy about that. Yeah. yeah $50. I had to pay them fifty dollars to put something in my backyard. But you, that's all it was all, that's all it was about it to begin with. It was a tax. They just wanted exactly. to Exactly. All of this is a racket for the city. Yeah, yeah. yeah these little towns, they, they have a lot of, um, it's like they're doing a lot to like make the town very entertaining. Like, you know, and so my house is a very good spot. It's walking distance to the downtown area. There's like a theater, an amphitheater, restaurant shops, mm-hmm. you know, just it's like a little brewery or distillery. And occasionally a really attractive woman walking down the street. Anyway. <laughs> that's what the city of atlanta is doing it's like instead of atlanta being where everybody goes all the little suburb towns kind of make their downtown areas have little they're very you know entertaining you know they yeah I don't know how to put it yeah yeah wow well that's a, that's good you sound like you're uh you're, you're settling in are you yes uh-huh. yeah I've been there the- that's good yeah, you probably. Yeah. How many boxes do you have still sitting around that you haven't emptied? I ju- uh, still have. Uh, yeah, I still have some stuff I need to get rid of. Like I need to have some kind of yard sale or something because I have a lot of stuff I don't need. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's all in my tea shed now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I they, they're places I've got to clean up now. I my 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 shirt drawer, my where my shirts are, mm-hmm. just completely jam-packed i can't you know i can't get more shirts in there you'd go through it and but the thing is a lot of them are t-shirts that have certain sentimental value yes like i have <laughs> my, my cnet t-shirt and my series xm t-shirt and i have my i have mm-hmm. i have uh, stuff from all way back when with the video toaster t-shirt you know oh, cool. yeah. so oh, a que- that's cool so it's a oh. question if i can get rid of them you know, if I can, how, how much make, I can thin out, huh? People like also, and I've got t-shirts from like my kids' sports and like clubs and stuff, and I make them like one of those quilts that you know you just take the t-shirt and just cut out the part. Huh. And the do you make quil- Do you make quilts? Yeah, and I you never can't cook, but you can make a quilt. <laughs> 
I know it's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Better than just having a box of t-shirts, you know. Yeah, well, of course, of course. No, but come make, it, when it, come to New York, I give you a bunch of my t-shirts. Go back, make a quilt, and send it to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the history I mean, of I wanna, Alex's I wanna, life. I want to and... know where Charlie puts his t-shirts. <laughs> right next to his power strips <laughs> yeah yeah well you know i i but by the way by the way big day tomorrow down in uh down in georgia yeah yeah thank the lord um i went and voted thursday uh -huh. um, good many i, I kind of beat the crowd i went like right after lunch but um i don't know just the ads haven't been too bad. At least I don't watch that much TV, but well, they say it looks like Warnock is going to win. I hope so. By a by a smidge. But the, the fact that it's that close is makes it makes me sick. <laughs> well, when you kind of think about it, it's like, for instance, University of Georgia, that's where he was a player. That's what he's known for. And look at UGA's number one team in the country right now, naturally. You know, so but not it's just, because of him. That was a long time ago. I know, I know. But I was just telling my friend when we were watching the game Saturday. I said, "This is why he's the Senate candidate." I mean, I really think. Well, I, mean, I said to Marjorie, and I uh, she corrected me. I said to Marjorie, "I said it's probably because we we sit here and watch him. We can't understand a word he says." <laughs> yeah, you know, but people in Georgia can understand it because he's speaking with a Georgian accent. And she looked at me and said, "He lived in Texas." Yeah. <laughs> no, he's got a very distinct South Georgia accent. That's really? Because yeah. what is that? Uh, totally indecipherable? <laughs> very, it's rural. It's, you know, you can tell like he's just from a rural area in Georgia. But it's, yeah, he didn't even live here. Like, what in the heck? Yeah, how'd you get that dumb? <laughs> yeah. you know? It's, it, but it's amazing. I think it's just amazing that that uh, it's that close. It shouldn't be that close. Yeah. You know, I, I could see that maybe 40 percent of the people want to vote for him. But the difference is like four percent. Well, you know, the people that are, you know, guests for him or, you know, conservatives or Republicans talking about how Warnock's just as bad. He's evil. He's evicting people and from the church that he's the of and he's a hypocrite because he gets this huge allowance for his housing and that kind of stuff i mean i don't really know if yeah, there is, and so maybe he is as bad morally as uh, as uh, as walker the only difference there is he has experience as a senator and uh, uh, walker hasn't had experience at anything political exactly at least warnock has been a leader in some capacity you know yeah and actually put a sentence together you know? yeah. listen you you find most politicians and you're going to find some real bones in their closets you know oh, I mean, yeah. yeah 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 uh, paula you're not having any you don't you, all your elections are over up there she has to still put up with this goddamn thing you know yeah, but we, what we have to do is live with who we got i'm not too thrilled about that uh, yeah i mean the the uh, the governor isn't terrible but he's uh he's pretty bad he's pretty bad and you know the, the, it's, it's not good in ohio for sure listen i'm democrat a democrat we have a democratic uh we don't talk about politics that much on this show no. we're not really are we talking about it now no we're just talking about the lay of the land i'm a democrat but quite frankly our mayor of new york who's a democrat i can't stand he's just horrible he's always off last week he was off to Italy or something for some kind of just social thing after he went to some kind of business he had to deal with over there. But I mean, he's just always, he, he's always showing up at these posh events. And I, you know, I wonder, does he sit in his office and do any work? Yes. You know, and that's what you want a guy to do, you know, plus, you know, but New York's got its share of problems. I don't know what they are because I don't go out the door anymore. <laughs> I was going to go take a walk today, and then I looked at it and said, 36 degrees. I said, well, screw that. <laughs> you know, give, give me a reason to go out. Well, Marjorie says it's healthy for you. 
And I go, okay, suppose I go out there and catch a cold. End of discussion. Anyway. So um, uh, anybody watch any good television lately? Maybe that, that'll take this off of the political. Yes, uh, Mike. I'm late to the party, and I understand that I'm late to the party, but I am halfway through the offer right now, and I am so just delighted oh, by it's it. It's very good. Anybody oh. here see the offer? It's on Paramount Plus, and it's, it's, the, so good. It, it's a mini series about the making of The Godfather. Oh. And it, it really it's quite and it's quite a drama. I mean, you don't think it's going to be a much of a drama. I'll tell you what I'm watching. There's something I'm watching, and I, uh, um, I, I felt I'll just take a look at it and see what it's like, right? But I, I knew I was. I said to myself, I can't possibly like this. And it's Welcome to Chippendales. Oh, was that good? <laughs> I saw the trailer. I was Good. Intrigued. It's terrific. Oh, that's now, awesome. Here's the thing. You think you're going to get into this thing about, you know, the life of the dancers and the drama that goes on between the dancers and the love affairs that the dancers have either with other people or each other or whatever. No, none of that. This is about Chippendales and all the intrigue that went on behind the scenes in, in that place that ultimately winds up in two guys being... Uh, part of a murder for hire plot. What? <laughs> so, so it turns out to be nothing like you thought it was going to be. Oh, it All starts right, we'll off with the fact that one of his original partner was uh, uh, the the uh, husband of uh, um, who who was that uh, playmate who got killed by her husband. Mm. Um, you know, um, uh, he was originally, huh? Dorothy, Dorothy Stratton. Stratton. Yeah, he was originally uh, the um, uh, one of the kind of kind of a partner in this place, and in the first episode, he kills Dorothy Stratton and himself. But that's how it starts out. So you're not even dealing with guys with their dicks hanging out, you know. I mean, you're you're dealing with uh, with a real drama that contains mystery and everything else. Terrific. And then the other show I've been watching, and I watched the last one last night, and I got to tell you, it's really very good. It's uh, it's it's at times very funny, at times very sweet, at times very chilling. Wednesday. Oh yeah, oh, which is the show about the Adams family daughter. Yes. Yeah. Uh, That's not a record. It said what? Yeah. It said a record, the most watched Netflix premiere ever it is very good and i can't convince marjorie to watch it i'll even watch it over again with her mm. uh but i as she she refuses to watch it and i told her today i said i finished it and it really it was very very good you know um mm. and the girl who plays wednesday is just terrific the character is well fleshed out you know, and uh, you know. I always loved that character when what? I was a kid. Like she, I, I wish she had had more stuff. Well, I was, who, so I wanted her yeah. to have part in the show. Well, you know who else was in the in the show? Christina Ricci. Yeah, played yeah. Awesome. The original, yeah. Played the original Wednesday. In the movie. In the movie. In the, yeah. movie, in the movies. Yeah. Yeah, the nineties Wednesday. Yeah, the 90s Wednesday. There was also the TV Wednesday. Who, oh, yeah. Who, a really very cute girl, but I didn't even know her name. I can't even remember. And, and nobody remembers her, you know. Oh, here comes uh, uh, Andrew Deutsch. Wait a minute. No, no. Hit cancel. Why did I hit remove? Hit admit. There we go. Uh, uh, no, it, it, it's a very good show. If you have a chance, watch it. It's on. Uh, it's on Netflix, if you have Netflix. Well, I got to see Wakanda forever. Did you really? I I liked it. I, I thought it was uh, it's it's too long. It's about a half hour too long. It's like two hours and forty minutes, and that it's it's a little much. But it, it's fun. It's escapist, and uh, my friends and I had the movie all to ourselves, which is really nice because it was in an uh, uh, an afternoon show, so I didn't have to worry about you know, crowds. Yeah, and it was just fun to be in the movies. I miss the movies. Well, we. Um... 
what were we gonna we were gonna go see some movie i i i have we haven't been to a, literally to a movie theater in almost i would imagine what when did uh, covid start like two years ago march 2020 march 2020 so, uh, you know, we're getting almost three, two and a half years ago. I haven't been to a movie theater. Uh, and in many ways, I don't miss them. You know, what do I have to miss? Somebody kicking the back of my seat, you know. And, spend, and spending $50. <laughs> and spending $50. Yeah, well, more than that, I take a cab going and back. Right. Okay. It's my, It comes about 75 bucks. And then you go to the yeah. movie and it sucks. Right. You know, like I don't trust those Marvel films at all because I've gone to ones where people gave them rave reviews and we went to see it. And Marjorie and I are looking at each other like, what the hell is this about? You know, it's like three out four, two and a half hours of pure action and very little plot. You know, they had they had a, a coming attractions of Avatar and it looked gorgeous. Yeah, wow. gonna, I'm looking forward to that one. That'll be an event for sure. Well, it may be. And then we don't know. You know, it could be terrible, too. I mean, uh, but I'll tell you something about um, about Marvel films. They're very like porno films. <laughs> let me explain. Yeah, let, let me explain. Let me explain. <laughs> in a Marvel film, you have a lot of action and in between it, a thin bare plot. Okay. <laughs> All right. In a porno film, you have lots of sex and then a thin bear plot. So they're very similar in nature in their construction <laughs> and what they give you. And quite frankly, I'd rather watch the porn film. Okay. I don't know, man. I mean, when you've got like 22, 23 movies and they all interconnect with each other a little bit. I think oh, it's a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's fine. I got to see all 22 goddamn yeah, movies. That's the plan. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I'm, Did uh, the Deep Throat series do that as well? Did they interconnect really well with each but, other? I mean, I argue with uh, with with uh, my movie reviewer, Michael Snyder, all the time. I say, oh, I went to go see that movie and it really sucked. And he said, that's because you haven't watched all the 19 other films that came before it. <laughs> And yeah. I went, you know, I'm sorry, but if I'm going to go to a movie, I don't want to have to do homework beforehand, you know, sit at home watching all 22 movies so I understand the relationships between them. See, I'll totally agree with you on that. I think a good Marvel movie is, it's a great standalone movie, but it also connects with the rest of them. I think that's the mark of a really good Marvel well, movie. Well, no, they have one standalone that we loved, which was Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. So didn't good. reference anything else, nothing. It was all by itself. And then all of a sudden, because it was a success, they wo they wove them into the Marvel universe, you know? Has anybody watched the holiday special yet? Yes, I did. I watched it's part very of it. very good. I thought it was terrible. Oh. No, really? <laughs> I thought it was terrible. Uh, oh. It looked oh, like really? what they did was, they, uh, I started watching it, and there's uh, there's the lead character. What's his name? Uh, Peter Quill, Peter Star Lord, Quill, Star Lord, and then there's a couple other people, and then they wind up in L.A. and leave all those others behind. It's like they tried to do a holiday special, but they couldn't get the whole cast to want to do the whole thing. You know, it was a cheap way of trying to do a Guardians thing. Wow, oh, hey, I liked it. I liked it a lot. <laughs> it delighted hey, me. Huh, Alex? Can you, can you hear me? Yeah. Dude, I heard you were talking about the Wednesday. Yeah. Something really funny about that. You know, when Stranger Things played that Kate Bush song, all of a sudden, all the kids in the world were downloading and listening to all these wonderful Kate Bush songs. And this Wednesday, she does this crazy dance to this song called Goo Goo Muck from a band called The Cramps, who's one of the greatest psychobilly. But when these kids go and start exploring that music, it's going to be the biggest scandal you'll ever see. They have such hits as All Women Are Bad, uh, Frank, and F, Frank and F and Christ, uh, Naked Girl Falling Down the Stairs, Bikini Girls with Machine Guns. Oh, they, wow. Lux Interior, the lead singer, used to come out in rubber pants and mm. high heels. And his, his lead guitar player, who was his life partner, is a, a woman named Poison Ivy, who was a dominatrix. And now all the kids in America are going to be researching and listening to this band 
Well, just I don't know. Week, I don't, weeks, I don't, two weeks from now. Yeah, I don't I think remember. It's that, holiday from I don't remember her <laughs> dancing to that in the mo- in the show. But it maybe. was it was Goo Goo Muck at the at the dance. She does that crazy oh. dance. Oh, they, that the, yeah. That all of the woke the woke kids are upset about. Because oh yeah, yeah. Weird. Okay, all right. And of course, you're not supposed to watch the movie because the villain's black. So, uh, you know, the couple of the kids that have bad attitudes are black, and therefore it's a racist movie too. The villain is black, and what the the, the the girl and the boy that are kind of mean. The mean kids are black kids, so it's a racist movie. In case you oh, is it really? That's the scandal of it. Did you watch? Did you watch Wednesday? I I did. I did. It was a lot of fun. Did you you enjoy it? She's going to be a huge star someday. She really, she really dominated that role. She was great. Yeah. But but when the kids start researching this band, because Gugu Muck on Spotify, millions and millions of people are watching, listening to it since the since the debut. You watch when the kids you know what happens how much in the this, parents go crazy. What happens in this series is she goes through the entire series without a smile. Without a smile, except for one point, yep. which she is mildly happy, and she's a little half smile, and you become so happy for her. You know? <laughs> God, she found joy. She she's gonna be a big star someday. She's really oh, yeah. she really she yeah. really did a great job with that role. Oh. Yeah, she's it's it's fun to see someone young that's that good. Well, it's, but, it's but a, just it's, wait, just wait till the music. Career, the this is a career it. defining role. This will give her more career. Yeah. You know, the the Cramps was one of the most fun concerts I've ever seen. Uh, and back in the day, you had to be eighteen to get into the show because you never knew what he was going to do. Yeah. Wow. And now, and now Tim Burton's got the kids ready to. to oh yeah, Tim Burton did the show too. Yeah, and Danny Elfman. Did the music on yeah. most of it. They, they, he did the first uh, four episodes, and then the rest are done by other people. Yeah. But it but, very, you know, it's very good. I enjoyed the hell out of it. And I was surprised. As I say, like, welcome to the Chippendales, I was surprised by, and I was surprised by this. There's, think, another, uh, what? there's another movie that debuted that a friend of mine told me I had to watch, a friend from Norway, called Troll. It's Godzilla in Norway with a troll instead of a dinosaur. <laughs> well, this is an old movie. It's the worst. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. It, it's, it's an old really. movie, huh? It's an old movie. No, it's a Norwegian. Uh, thing. Yeah, but it's, it's an old movie. It's been around for a while, I think. I I think it's brand new on Netflix. But maybe they I, I did another troll movie. You know, when it's you a, this three hundred foot tall troll yeah, tearing up Oslo, troll. and and they they have to fight it, just like it's a Godzilla movie. Well, Except in Norway, so it's we, a troll. We have, and... we have a lot of revisionism going on. Yeah, uh, yeah. For instance, to begin with, trolls are like Norway. That you go, by, you go into a souvenir shop, and they're trolls, right? Little ones, big ones, mm-hmm. ones that are t- as tall as I am that you can buy. Uh, in fact, I own one somewhere. I bought when I was in uh, in Norway. But the revisionism that's happening is that. They're making a, um, they made a, um, what was a movie that, uh, oh yeah, they just turned out a film called Violent Night, I think it's called, mm-hmm. and it's Santa Claus, and yeah. he's kind of coming down people's chimneys, but he's a drunk, and he's uh, just not the perfect Santa Claus we all remember, but it's from years of having to give out toys and from years of having to find out who's naughty and nice and so on. And he shows up at this home one night and some guy breaks into it and holds the family hostage. And now it's kind of like die hard with Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, that kind of revisionism, I really like. And what they, uh, another guy did is I think they found that, uh, I think it's, um, was it Pinocchio? Uh, or maybe it was even Snow White. I can't remember which. But there were, it, 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 several Disney pictures were taken from other books and other stories. You know, Snow White is a grim fairy tale, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, Pinocchio was by a, a guy named Colati who wrote it. And that particular Fit a, a, a book has now gone into public domain. So any I could make a, a, a Guillermo del Toro just did a Pinocchio movie. So these guys did a Pinocchio movie in which he's a, a he's like a, a a serial killer. <laughs> so you know they're revising all these things. You know they're taking away my childhood and destroying it. 
No, well, actually, that means that they're that they're going back to what those uh, fairy tales originally were like, which well, were brutal. Well, yeah. Pinocchio was very dark. Uh, uh, Pinocchio was uh, uh, also uh, um, Hansel and Gretel. Lots of the three bears and and uh, a, a bunch of them. Hansel and Gretel, yeah, yeah. Hansel, Hansel and Gretel, absolutely. Oh, when I was a kid, I was frightened by Hansel and Gretel yeah. because you know they could get cooked. What? killed and made into cookies or something i can't remember what the witch used to do with kids you know but uh where did what happened to andrew deutsch did he disappear just now i guess he had something to do uh but uh you know so uh, uh, we have some movies to look forward to that are revisionist uh, and uh, let's see here well, i'm trying to think what else what else have i seen and i'm watching a really very good documentary on it uh, apple plus uh about louis armstrong so you know who probably was one of the greatest musicians in american history no question about it he defined the music of an age but anyway so uh let me see here what else so uh, what's ha what's happening up in canada mike any any uh, uh intrigue is it work? Nah, it's sitting around freezing where we are right now. So it's, well, it's uh, Canada. It's, of course, you sit around freezing. <laughs> no, but I mean, like right at the the freezing mark. That's where it's sitting right now. It's not going below that. Uh, folks are skiing up in the mountains. It's lovely. Um, we went to the Christmas tree light up with our granddaughter over the weekend. So that was a lot of fun. Just uh, yeah, no, it's 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 all good. We're having fun up here. Do they call it the Christmas tree light up? I think they call it the annual light up here in Kelowna. Yeah. Because here we call it the lighting of the Christmas tree. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Those crazy differences between our two nations. Well, yeah, you're the guys who have Thanksgiving before we do. Wow. Early harvest. Huh? Early harvest. Early harvest, yeah. Um, do you, do, is it, it traditional in th in th on Thanksgiving to have a turkey like we do down here? Oh, yeah. It's all the same. Okay. It's all the same. Yeah. So, so why can't you do it when we do it? We can all get along. Well, this is a good point. However, it, there literally is an earlier harvest up here, so I think yeah. that that's I think that's the reason for it. See, I, I I actually believed a long time ago that we should go to war with Canada, <laughs> uh, and, and the reason is is that we are so bad at winning wars lately that this is at least one we could win. <laughs> Well, if that's the case, we welcome our American overlords and uh, enjoy our maple syrup and hockey. <laughs> I was watching. I was watching sixty minutes this week. Anybody watch the the interview with Macron? Yeah, he's too good looking to be the head of a country, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's he, he's movie star. He's movie star stuff. But then again, we had one. Obama was a movie star. You know. He could very easily, if he decided to go into movies today, he could probably be a star. Yeah. You know, he has that quality. But Was yeah. Ronald Reagan considered good looking back in the day? Or was he always a character actor? He was just kind of like a chiseled, handsome, leading man in Hollywood. So like a Warren Beatty type yeah, guy? I mean, but, but yeah. no, 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 I don't think I ever heard anybody refer to Ronald Reagan as a hunk. Yeah. No. He, was, he was what we call meh. Yes, he was there. You know, he wasn't. He was a. He wasn't that successful an actor. I mean, as Hollywood actors go, he wasn't on the the par with people like Henry Fonda and Gregory Peck and people like that. He was more on a much lower level, like Bedtime for Bonzo, lower level. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was his most famous movie. <laughs> well, because it. it it was the most embarrassing movie he ever made because he's playing opposite a chimp. Now, what newsman, what newsman played opposite a chimp? Cronkite. Yeah, very good, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. He did a morning show before he did the evening news. Did a morning show, CBS Morning News. And the most famous thing about that show was J. Fred Muggs. Who was a chimp who was on the show every day? That's right. And J. Fred Muggs was more a star than Walter Cronkite. So, and he always used to refer to that many times in interviews about the time he played with the chimp. He said he enjoyed it actually. 
Mm-hmm. Have you, any of you ever had to play with a chimp? Because, well, I'm trying to remember. I I, I was at a, a concert for um, uh, Alice Cooper out in New Jersey, and I was backstage. And Alice Cooper had brought all these uh, circus acts and things like that to be part of the show, right? So I am sitting there, and I don't know. It wasn't J. Fred Muggs. It was another famous chimp. And I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, the chimp comes and sits next to me. (laughs) No thanks. That was the creepiest thing, creepiest uh, 10 minutes I ever spent in my life. I mean, I'm looking at him and going, so how are things going? And he goes... (laughs) (laughs) And he's got his legs crossed, like I've got mine right now, you know, we're just sitting there like, uh, you know, what's new with your wife, you know, that kind of that kind of relationship. Uh, and the other story, the other story I have to tell, there was a guy, I'm trying to remember the name of the chimp, it was a very famous chimp, he was on, he was on Howdy Doody, I think, and he was on a lot of shows over the years, and really it wasn't the same chimp, it was this guy who had this chimp, and he was very famous. So then he kept just when they die, get another chimp and name him that name. And, you know, if I said his name, you'd probably remember him, but I can't remember the uh, the name of the chimp. And so I was invited out to his house. Um, and uh, I, uh, so I'm told, you know, this is the guy that has that, that chimp, right? Yeah, monkey. And, um, so we go out and we hit, we're hanging out, right? And I finally decide I got to go to the bathroom. It's a big giant house. And I can't figure out where the bathroom is. And nobody will tell me where the bathroom is because nobody knows where the bathroom is, right? They say, I think it's somewhere downstairs. Oh, no. So I go downstairs and I open up what I think is a, uh, a what do you call it? A, um, um, a, 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 a bathroom and I open it up and there are several buckets of bananas <laughs> and then I went to open another door and there were a bunch of monkey props you know I mean it was the most bizarre thing I ever heard in my life and I said I came back up I said they got nothing but bananas downstairs <laughs> and he goes you want to see something really unusual look over there and I looked over where the guy was pointing, and there was a little house. He said, what's that? He said, that's where the chimp lives. Wow. He built him a house on his property. So, you know, these chimps are very lucky. People people don't, nobody kills a chimp, right? Nobody eats a chimp. Oh. Chimps can survive forever just based on the fact that they're chimps. But, Unless yeah. you're Lancelot Link. So I, I, I yeah, I don't know what the name of that monkey was. Um, uh, oh, he had one name, and everybody knew the name. And if I said it to you, you'd immediately know the name of the chimp. So, <laughs> but if anybody remembers the name of famous chimps, just let me know. And Can now I will famous, go. On, I will let I you know. A famous chimp named Donald. Uh, <laughs> Michael Jackson had bubbles. Bubbles. He had bubbles. Yeah. Um. Um. I I'm, I I will wind up remembering the chimp after. Not Maurice, is it? No, not Mar- Maurice the chimp. <laughs> Travis, Travis, no, Enos, huh? Travis or Enos or Ham? <laughs> You're looking at a list of chimps somewhere. Yeah, yes, of course. <laughs> Name is chimps. He went on chimps.com. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which one starred uh, with Clint Eastwood? I'm trying to remember the. That was, that was not a chimp. Team. That was an orangutan. Oh, that, was an that was Clyde. Yeah. Yes. That was That's Clyde. Yes, there it is. There it is. That but was an orangutan. orangutan. Right. Left turn. Yeah. yeah, and I hear orangutans are much nicer chimps on the chimp level, you know. But uh, yeah, one chimp ripped that woman's face off. I was going to say that there was a it was up in uh, up in uh, uh, either Connecticut or Westchester or whatever. She had it transplanted here in Cleveland at her new yeah, face. This guy had it had it had a chimp and it bit the woman's face off. Cheetah. 
Cheetah. Oh, yeah. Cheetah was Tarzan. Tarzan. And Cheetah, Cheetah was Tarzan. wasn't really Cheetah, but I can't remember what the real name of the chimp was. But it was Alex. <laughs> <laughs> But um, um, Cheetah also appeared in another series, too. Cheetah worked pretty much a lot. But, uh, yeah, the, all, all the Tarzan movies, it was Cheetah. Oh. So, yeah. Uh, I hear he worked for Bananas. Huh? Uh, he worked for Bananas, <laughs> yeah. Bananas. <laughs> Peanuts. You, you want to get paid? Go down to the downstairs. There's a closet. It's got a bunch of bucket of uh, bananas. <laughs> How did I get on this discussion? I don't know. I, and I was thinking as I was telling the story that this is really the most boring story I've ever told on the air. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you people are all coming up with these other chimps. We're here for you, brother. Yep. Yeah. 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 Well, you didn't remember the chimp, Mike. No, I remember Bubbles. That was my contribution to the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget. Uh, Chim Chim from Speed Racer was another famous. <laughs> Why are chimps so famous? I guess they made lovable pets in movies or something. I don't know. Well, they're they're actually the most similar to humans. Well, yeah. yes, yes, except they're more civilized. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was Zippy the chimp. Zippy, that was, was it. it. Zippy the Chimp, you're right. That was the guy who owned the Zippy the Chimp franchise and, <laughs> and had this house with the bucket of uh, whatever. And I almost think, and it's uh, it maybe <laughs> that this guy's name was Ray Raiden, who was involved in the killings at uh, uh, on uh, the uh, uh, Cotton Club murders, that he was killed. Really? Yeah. Remember the, the chimp everybody had on their bar back in the 70s that played the cymbals and you'd hit it on the head and it was yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, that one, yeah. Okay. That was Spike Jones stuff, right? What? The, 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 the never mind. <laughs> well, he had one in his act. Yeah. <laughs> My father worked for Spike Jones. Really? Yeah. yeah, he used to play in the orchestra when he would come to San Francisco. Huh. And my aunt worked for Spike Jones when he would come to San Francisco. And her job was she played a harp. She was a harpist. And she would sit on the edge of the end of, uh, side of the stage with her harp during the entire Spike Jones set, which was 45 minutes in those days, because they do six shows a day, right? And she would, her only job was to be knitting while she was sitting at her harp. And then at the very end of the show, she puts the knitting down, does a, one little glissando, and goes back to knitting. <laughs> By the end of a week at the Warfield Theater, she had a piece of knitting that went all the way across the stage. <laughs> <laughs> For six shows a day, six, seven days for a week, how long is that thing going to get? Wow. Yeah. So. That was, but my aunt, she happened to be a very good harpist, but all she had to do was one glissando and she got union scale. You know, it's amazing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, my father, my father played with a lot of people. I mean, you know, he, he because he was a pickup violinist. Bam would come to town. They'd do like the first chair violin would be a guy they brought up from Hollywood. Right. But the rest of the band was local musicians. Mm -hmm. And so he would work with Spike Jones. I remember him working with Lena Horn. I met Lena Horn as a kid. Oh. Yeah, I was waiting for my father to come out at the Warfield Theater. And uh, I'm standing there. And uh, uh, he, he comes out. Or maybe he doesn't come out. Yeah, he comes out. And then right in front of him is Lena Horn. And my father always at home used to tell me how much he loved Lena Horn, and you know, she didn't say sexy because a kid wouldn't understand that. Yeah, but that she was really lovely and terrific, and I'm in love with her, is what he. <clears throat> so she comes my way, and I look up at her and I say, "Hi, Miss Horn. I just want to say my father's in love with you." <laughs> <laughs> and my father. Turn beet red. <laughs> Kids say the darndest thing. Yeah, I had a pretty good childhood that way. You know, my father. We, I used to 
uh, when we were down in L.A., I used to, my playground was the Coconut Grove. Mm. It's a nightclub because they rehearsed during the day and I'd run around playing in the trees and everything, the fake palm trees they had there. Wow. So, so you're watching this documentary about Louis Armstrong. Did your dad ever uh, have any encounters with him along the way? I don't think so. No, no. My dad played trombone for uh, uh, Jimmy Dorsey, I think, for a mm. while. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, Jimmy Dorsey, who was a yeah, who was a trombonist himself. He was. Yeah, he so was. You're, he must have felt inferior. Uh, I'm sure he <laughs> did. But he, my dad was amazing. I mean, I I learned learned how to play in the marching band. He'd pick it up. Thirty years since he picked it up, and he would just oh, 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 oh. it was like holy shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, my father was just a working musician, you know. And the only thing that happened is, like all things, uh, things become outmoded and there was a certain point at which combos became popular mm. the only thing that that, uh, that need violinists are orchestras not bands yeah. so there was less and less work for a violinist and that that was the you know that's when he went into real estate <laughs> but i mean he was literally i mean when i was growing up as a kid working musician i i sometimes never saw my father for like two months at a time because he was on the road with all these bands trying to make a living and send money back home to take care of me yeah. but i never thought he didn't love me because he every time once at least once every couple of days he would call home and he would talk to me mm -hmm. you know so he he balanced that very well but he had to, he had to make a living for the for the family you know wow. and i felt uh, uh you know uh, i love the guy really he was a great character how old were you when he passed i was uh god i think maybe 22 23 oh, wow that's very wild. young oh, my wow. god. yeah yeah I, he was he was 59 he died oh, very young damn. he died young. of a pituitary tumor which today they can take care of without any problem they yeah. in those days they couldn't you know wow. hack you to pieces trying to get to it so anyway you know but uh he he i loved him a lot i really he, he to this day he's my hero you know yeah, yeah. i was I, I was an only child so he treated me that way and i sure. love that you know anybody here an only child nobody wow wow it's amazing because, um, you know, I always have Marjorie say to me, don't you feel terrible having been an only child? And I said, why would I? <laughs> you know, when Does it help that my brother wishes he was? <laughs> I was like, you missed out on the joy of having your brother pummel you to death <laughs> yeah well i see you know marjorie and her brother and i go is that worth it you know is that worth the pain and the anguish but you know uh but i i you know i i almost had a little brother but my mother miscarried so or, or child i don't know what it was they didn't have you know ways of finding out ahead of time in those days but I really, I really, uh, you know, uh, but it, I had a good childhood. I think I was happy with it, you know, and, and a lot of things I got to do. And my, I didn't fit in with the rest of the kids because everybody else's father went out and they had like a job. Yeah. And my father was a musician and they didn't understand that, mm. you know. Yes, my father uh, just uh, fixed a lot of cars down at his car dealership. And my, my father went and did this. My father went and did that. What did your father do? Went and played his fiddle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but wasn't that the catalyst, though, to allow you to chase your dream of broadcasting? Like, maybe if, if he had a, a standard job, uh, maybe, you know, you would have been kind of influenced to get something safe rather than go on the adventure you did. Well, I never thought of that what, that way. Oh. But, you know, you might be you might be right. You know, that I, I uh, certainly, um, well, I, I grew up in show business is what I did. And that's probably the most common denominator. And why I went into broadcasting is because it was, it was in, instilled in me, in my blood, you know, and I wanted to be in some form of show business, but I never could play an instrument. You know, I tried on several occasions, but I never could. 
And one day after I'd gotten into radio, I said, he, my father said to me, he said, you know, I always wanted you to be, it would have been nice if you had been a musician, but you play a turntable better than anybody I know. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, you do, what, you, you, you do what you do as well as I like to be as a, a musician. So I always felt good about that. I just wish he had lived long enough to see what mediocre success I had, you know, in this business. Yeah, you, you did all right. <laughs> hey, listen, we've run out of we've run out of time. We have a smaller crew today because people are out getting spine shots put in their spines and MRIs, and you know, uh, and we lost uh, we lost um, uh, what's his name? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But that's uh, we thank him for joining us because he's a very funny guy. Mike Chisholm, thank you so much for being there. Peace and love. Canada. Give our best to Marjorie. Are you please. trying to look with that like the back of of D Dave Letterman's set? Well, mm -hmm. it's it's. I don't think it's uh, we're trying to look like it, but having a bridge from his set, I think, is pretty cool for the Letterman podcast. Um, that's not the real bridge from his set, though. It is one of them. Absolutely, it is. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. How'd you yeah. put your hands on that? Were you sitting next to the dumpster the next day? No, but it, it it came out of the dumpster though. It totally did. It was in there for about thirty seconds, and then a stagehand grabbed it, and they've had it ever since. And I got it from them. So. Oh, very good. Well, and yeah, uh, very nice. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, the sets the sets a work in progress. There's other stuff coming. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, sir. Uh, Len Lafrisco, thank you very much for having joined us today. Charlene, always nice to have you there. I feel very comfortable having you around. Uh, <laughs> Paul Levin, you know, we love you, Paula. You know, yeah. Friend of the family. Uh, Charlie, think the world of you, too. Uh, don't expect Jack to be on tonight, by the way. Yeah. I'm planning on calling. And Mandy O'Brien. Oh, boy. I, I, I'm I'm praying for, the, for Warnock to win so that you can not have to live in the craziest state in America. I want you to be living in a purple state now, which it kind of is, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. And but finally, Marjorie Taylor Greene, you know, just yeah, you still got Marjorie <laughs> Taylor Greene. <laughs> and and by the way, time now for Edward Berger to sign us off by saying that's all folks. <laughs> Thanks everybody. See you later. Thank Bye. you. Bye guys.